intraocular pressure is the only modifiable risk factor in glaucoma. Additionally, control of intraocular pressure is the most commonly assessed parameter in the follow-up of glaucoma. Therefore, the knowledge about the theory and practice of applanation tonometry is a must for every general ophthalmologist. This video has been created to give insight into the practice of the most standard method of assessment of intraocular pressure that is Goldman applanation tonometry. Intraocular pressure is measured by relating deformation of globe to force responsible for deformation. Depending on shape of deformation, tonometry has been categorized into two types. Indentation tonometry where shape of deformation is a truncated cone and applanation tonometry where the shape of deformation is simple flattening. Their prototypes are Schwartz tonometer and Goldman applanation tonometer respectively. Schwartz tonometer displaces large volume of fluid and hence scalar rigidity affects results significantly. As a result, the amount of fluid displaced is variable and unpredictable which gives inconsistent results and hence requires conversion tables based on empirical data. In applanation tonometry, the shape of deformation is simple flattening and is constant. Therefore, relationship of intraocular pressure can be derived from mathematical calculations. Goldman applanation tonometer is a type of variable force applanation tonometers. It measures force required to applanate a standard area of cornea. Non-contact or air puff tonometer measures time required to deform cornea in response to standard force and then calculates the intraocular pressure. Other applanation tonometers include Perkins tonometer which uses same biprism as that of Goldman tonometer. Pneumatic and Mackey mark tonometers can be used in scarred or edematous corneas. Tonopen is a handy instrument which is useful for measurement of intraocular pressure in irregular corneas and in bedridden patients. Goldman applanation tonometer is based on Imbert Fix law which states force required to deform a perfectly flexible dry and thin sphere is equal to the product of area deformed and the pressure inside the sphere. Since I is neither a perfect sphere nor is thin, dry or flexible, some other forces come into play and thus the law needs modification. Volume displacement and ocular rigidity are negligible in applanation tonometry and the surface tension of tears and force required to bend cornea balance out each other when diameter of external area of applanation is 3.06 mm. Thus at this stage the law becomes applicable. The Goldman applanation tonometer consists of five parts which are measuring prism, feeler arm, control weight insert, housing and revolving knob with measuring drum. Different models are available for different types of slit lamps. However, the probe tip is common to all models. It consists of a doubling prism which is used to applanate cornea and it optically splits the circular area of corneal contact in two horizontal semicircles by inducing horizontal shift. On touch, tear film appears as bright yellow spot which turns into semicircular arcs when tonometer is moved forwards. When diameter of 3.06 mm is flattened, the semicircles interlock. Certain precautions need to be considered before undertaking the procedure. First of all, contact tonometry should be avoided in infected or injured eyes. Remember to clean the tonometer between two cases and disinfect the prism after a day's use. Remove the chemical thoroughly after disinfection or cleaning. One should verify prism for scratches, sharp edges when the day starts and replace the prism every two to three years. Equipment preparation includes setting the magnification at 10x, switching on power to maximum light and beam to maximum height, bring blue filter in place, create an angle of 60 degree between illumination and microscope. After this, turn measuring drum to setting 1 which is equivalent to 10 millimeters of intraocular pressure. After informing the patient regarding procedure, anesthetize both eyes with propericane. Place moistened fluorescent strip in lower conjunctival sac and place head of patient on chin rest. This is the right opportunity to share a few practical tips. 
do not touch the lashes with prism they are not anesthetized and will induce blinking it is more accurate to measure increasing than decreasing intraocular pressure so keep drum position lower than expected value of intraocular pressure although you can start with high drum reading than one if intraocular pressure is expected to be very high prism and tonometer should get fixed in the notch the actual measurement involves the following procedure after obtaining contact observe cornea through microscope regular pulsation of two semicircular rings of equal size show that tonometer is in correct position these pulsations represent cardiac cycles drum is rotated to adjust pressure on globe until edges of both rings just meet at the midpoint of these pulsations reading is multiplied by 10 this part of video shows inaccurate horizontal centering which is being corrected this part of the video shows inaccurate vertical centering which is being corrected thickness of mirrors should be around 1/10 of total diameter of flattened area thick mirrors can lead to overestimation Calibration of instrument should be done once a month. The calibration check is performed at scale readings of 0, 2 and 6. Precise setting of mark is the key to successful calibration check. The procedure of calibration should be carefully understood by going through the manufacturer's instructions in the manual. If any defect is detected, the instrument needs to be sent to the manufacturer for repair. Disinfection of prism is best done by home bleach sodium hypochlorite, 3% hydrogen peroxide, mild soap or proprietary disinfectants recommended by manufacturers. For cleaning in between cases, using hydrogen peroxide, dilute bleach or simply distilled water are the most practical. One should make sure that prism tip is dried before use to avoid getting excessively broad mires. Although the Goldman tonometer is the gold standard due to its accuracy and reproducibility, it has some sources of error which may be patient, observer or instrument related. The most important considerations are astigmatism and corneal thickness. In highly astigmatic corneas, one should align minus cylindrical axis to red indicator which is placed as 43 degrees from horizontal indicator. Low corneal thickness like in post-refractive surgery leads to underestimation and high corneal thickness can overestimate the intraocular pressure. However, if corneal thickness has been increased due to corneal edema, a falsely low reading may be recorded. In addition to these errors, the procedure has limited value in irregular corneas and that assessment of intraocular pressure over contact lenses is not feasible. At the end, I would like to say that this is a reasonably simple and probably the most accurate method available today to assess intraocular pressure. As a result, this is a standard method against which all other tonometers are assessed. Therefore, every ophthalmologist should not only learn this procedure but should practically make its use a standard practice in their clinics.